was when this record came out, me and Spawn were already rapping together, and we were Atmosphere. And what's funny is when Atmosphere started, I was Spawn's DJ, because mind you, I still was trying to be a DJ. I just was rapping on the side because I liked doing it. I liked writing stories, and most of my raps were stories or were conscious raps. Um, but I wasn't rapping in Spawn's group. I was just his DJ, and then eventually we realized that I'd make a better rapper than a DJ. I even suck at DJing, what do you know? So I became his, 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 his sidekick, his partner, his rapper. I was still buying lots of records, but I was trying to become more aware of the community and what was going on in the rap community. I was trying to go to more shows that I could go to. I was trying to, you know, and that's when I actually, that's when I discovered Radio K. Um, I was driving at a time for a company, and so I'd spend like eight hours a day in a truck. And I, you know, eventually you got to, you know, you get sick of listening to Pearl Jam songs, and so you start playing around and looking for new stations to listen to. I, you know, that's when I discovered talk radio, which made a pretty big impact on me. And that's when I discovered Radio K, which actually made a huge impact on me. Like, Radio K really shaped a lot of my musical taste suddenly for about three years. It made me realize there was a lot of music out there that is not being pushed on you, you know, by, by promotional companies or by radio or by video. There was just people releasing their own music and, 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 and doing it themselves. And that made a really, you know, it really got me and Derek really thinking about new stuff, you know. And, and, and right around the same time, luckily, we hooked up with Sadiq. And I had hooked up already with Musab. Actually, I used to buy weed from Musab. <laughs> Musab used to be in a group called Labyrinth. And I met them dudes because... I DJ'd a high school party for South High. It wasn't like their prom, but it was like a pre-prom that was more of like an informal kind of party that they had right inside of the school. And I was DJing schools at the time. I was, you know, I, I'd, I'd reached a point where I gave up on trying to be a wiki, wiki, wiki DJ, and I just wanted to be a guy that came and played records. And so I started getting hired for school dances and functions like that. And, and whenever I go do them, I would open up the mic and allow people to freestyle, you know. And at one time at South, Unicus and uh, Niche and Brian, the kid that now raps for Leroy Smokes, and um, I think it was just them. It might have been, oh no, Extreme. Ha! Them four dudes got up on the mic and freestyled, and afterwards we talked and exchanged numbers and kind of got to know each other, and I ended up meeting Musab because Unicus invited me over to his house one time to come and hang out. And it turned out he was taking me to the house that Musab lived at. And so me and him immediately clicked. Plus, you know, he was selling weed. <laughs> so I started buying weed from him. And that's when our friendship started kicking off. And just luckily, it was around the same time that me and Spawn were starting to hang around Sadiq more. And it was around the same time that I was discovering independent music. And I think all of that just kind of like, you know, I'm sure you talk to any of us. Sadiq or Musab, all of our stories are a little bit different, but they all kind of still focus around a time that was actually kind of magic because of how things were just kind of lining up and happening. And that's when Headshots started. But this record, check this out. I, this record, we don't need you anyway. <laughs> what were we talking about? This record, um, I loved it so much, and I loved Radio K, and I loved the spirit behind them, but the rap music they were playing was garbage. It sucked. And so I put together a stack of records myself, and I found out where Radio K was, and I drove over there. And, and mind you, I wasn't, I wasn't an employee or a student of the school, so I had no business even walking up in their building, I guess. But I went over there, I made my way up to the floor it was on, and I went to them and gave them, literally just gave them a stack of records. It was like, please, listen to these and figure out a way to work these into your programming. I got nothing to do with none of these records. I just really think you guys need to be playing rap that is aligned with the other types of music you're playing. It's kind of like you're not, you, you know, you're, you're not playing top 40 music, but you're playing top 40 rap is kind of where I was coming from. I was like, you guys should be playing more underground stuff just like everything else. And I actually wrote a huge note on here to some guy named Joel who I guess was the program director down there at the time, and I'm not going to read it to you, but it's yeah. really humbling. It says, it, yeah. hey, that. hey, Joel, please check out track three on the B-side. The song is called Eye Examination. It's a fat song. <laughs> <laughs> the fat 
has this around it. I don't. So maybe I was being sarcastic. I don't even know. I this was so. an F. Yeah, yeah, I did spell it with an F. It's a fat song, and it's clean, and it's deep. That song is not deep, man. I think I was probably high on Musab's weed when I wrote this. Anyway, I'm going to call and request this song every day for the next six months. <laughs> Thanks, slug, urban atmosphere. It's ridiculous. So I want to know how you got that back. Did you never drop no, it? No, no, actually, way later, years later, they had us over, I think maybe just like two years ago, they had us in and do off the record. And while we were in there just kind of messing around, somebody came over and was like, hey, this is yours. And I looked at it and was just like, <laughs> wow, and they gave it back to me. Wow, yeah. awesome. It's pretty sweet, actually. So that record made its way around, I guess. That's, that's how it works, man. So you guys started out as this headshots thing. Yeah, so, yeah, through <laughs> me and Musab's friendship, um, you know, me and Spawn knew Sadiq from when we were younger. I didn't know him so much. He was one of the older kids that I was scared of, kind of. But, like, I knew who he was. But Derek was good friends with Sadiq. And Sadiq came. Well, what happened was Sadiq was part of this thing called, uh, I don't know what it's called, Genesis Brigade. Uh, uh, you know, the Universal Parliament of Hip Hop. It had a bunch of names. But he was part of basically a promotions company that was, like, you know, essentially stealing money from record labels in order to promote records for people, like a street team, essentially yeah. a very well-organized street team, but they would also throw events at which they would give away crap from the labels. It's like they had it all tied together. It was a really good hustle for a bunch of, like, 23-year-olds at the time. Like, I can't even knock it, you know? And uh, so they started throwing these, 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 events and eventually they threw these things called the mic check showcases and this is I've, I've, this has been talked about a lot and i've read it in, in, in interviews and whatnot but i'm gonna go ahead and rehash it anyway me and musab were already friends i didn't know anybody else from headshots yet except for sadiq but sadiq told me and spawn that we could if we wanted to we could sign up to be in the mic check showcase it was basically like you get you know five minutes to get on stage do a song freestyle and then get off, and the next group's gonna go up, and it's like a battle. But instead of us battling head to head, like they do in Eight Mile, it was more like a battle of the bands kind of a thing. And so we made a pretty good impact at the one we were at. People were just like, oh, you know, not bad. Good beat. I don't know what they, I can't believe they actually liked it, but like they, you know, they, they, we made a pretty good impact. And so other dudes who were kind of like on the same similar frame mindset as us, you know, new school thinking kind of dudes, you know, just, just like-minded people came together. And that was Headshot. Sadiq was in with the Abstract Pack. He was friends with them. Full Circle, who later became Dapo, were another one of the groups that performed at these things. Black Hole, who later became Los Nativos, was another one of the groups that performed at these things. Urban Atmosphere, which later became Atmosphere, was another one. And I believe Labyrinth, Musab's group, had played at one of them. That picture is not from that, but that's a great picture also. Here, leave that up, we'll get to that. And, uh, and so just, you know, like-minded people, people that wanted to freestyle, people that wanted to have a good time, people that wanted to, people that wanted to, to just be like, forget making demos, forget everything, let's just do this ourselves. And, and Sadiq kind of became the den mother for all of us, you know? He was the only one, A, that owned a home. And so it was like a good place for everybody to congregate and, and, and I don't know, work on music, hang out, talk, work on ideas. Um, but that was 93 when, when Headshots came together. And, I, and that was directly because of these Battle of the Bands type situations that we had going on with the different rap groups. And, and it was really good. And you know, it's amazing because it's like, I, I, sometimes I stop and I think about the other groups that performed at these events, you know, and, and, and the fact that not all of them necessarily continue to perform, but they would break up and become something else or become something else. But it's, it's weird to see how a lot of the people that are still involved in the movement here locally 
actually have like a strong history within this, you know, regardless of, 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 of their status or whatnot. It's, it's, it's really kind of great to see a lot of people are still actually taking part and busy and, and out here working and, and, and still love what they're doing. Like, ha! 